The Warriors won. They actually won a game, folks. That is exciting. The Warriors are now just one game below 500. They still own the worst road record in the NBA. But look, a win's a win. Unfortunately, folks, I'm not going to come in here and just do nothing but praise the Golden State Warriors because Steve Kerr, given this is easily, I don't think there's even a dispute anymore of stating this, this is his worst year as a head coach of the Golden State Warriors and of his entire career. And uh, once again tonight, he prioritized winning a regular season game against the worst team in the NBA. He, and, and when I say prioritize, I mean playing his two-way players over the Golden State Warriors youngsters who need development if they're going to win a world championship again. I will break that down next. I also want to praise Jordan Poole. A career high for you, sir. Bravo. The pool party's raging. This is Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is fun, folks. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code Locked On. That's prizepicks.com. Use the promo code Locked On. You can follow me, Cyrus Sotsas, on Twitter at Dog Surf Roadshow. You can follow this program on Twitter at Locked on Dubs. Well, folks, the Warriors won a game, and again, we're going live. It's Sunday Night Live tonight. Hello, everyone. Let us pre-sports. Let us pray sports. Says, let's go, Cyrus. What's up? Rebel the Sounds in the house. I also heard a stat tonight. I don't know if that was you, Let us pray sports, uh, who tweeted this, uh, and kudos for that. Uh, and, and I think the person who tweeted it cited uh, NBC, NBC Sports Bay Area as a source of their information that the Golden State Warriors, when Draymond Green scores in double digits, win four out of five games. Uh, I don't know if that applies to uh, this season, to his career, um, but Draymond Green had a great game. I'll break down all the stats in just a minute, but praise first. Praise be to Jordan Poole. The pool party was on fire tonight. Let me break down these stats. And again, everyone in the chat, I will address everything uh, but Jordan Poole, my lordy lordy, Let, let's let's read what exactly he did tonight. In 35 minutes of play, he was efficient. Five for 11 from three. That's good, all right? Jordan Poole's three-point percentage this year has been a bit of a struggle. Uh, entering this game tonight, I believe his three-point percentage was at 32.4%. Eh. The Mendoza line for three-point shooting is 33%. If you're 33 or higher, that's the equivalent of 50% or better shooting from two. So that's fine. 33% or better from three is good. You live with that. That's great. You tell your player, you continue shooting. Jordan Poole this year, entering tonight, was at 32.4, and that's ticking up. He's had a poor start to this season in terms of shooting and just really a lot of, uh, of different aspects of this game. But tonight, five for 11, that's just, a sh just shy of 50% from the field. His free throw shooting, this is the reigning free throw king, folks. And his free throw shooting has been a little hit or miss this year. Uh, was 10 for 11, still missed one. He's at 86% on the year, uh, which by his standards, incredibly, are not great. Um, only got one rebound. That's not what he's there for. The six assists were solid. But 43 points on 35 minutes of, of action. Bravo. A new career high for Jordan Poole. Um and uh, Andre FRBK writes, the pool party's good when he doesn't dribble too much and drives. Yeah, that could be fair. And he's been a huge victim this season of all these travel calls and the the, the officials breaking down on that quite a bit. Um, so kudos to Jordan Poole. That was just a, a fantastic performance. He was clearly one of the biggest reasons, if not the biggest reason, why the Warriors beat the Toronto Raptors tonight. The final score was 126-110. And that score is not reflective of just how big of a blowout this was. Um, other players on the roster tonight that really uh, were exemplary. Um, Draymond Green himself, crazy start to the game where 
uh, Pascal Siakam and Draymond Green basically took turns hitting three pointers. In fact, the first five uh, shooting attempts of this game were Siakam, two three point attempts, made them both. Draymond Green, three three point attempts, made all three. So the first five shots of the game were all three pointers that were all made by Pascal Siakam with two, Draymond Green with three. The only downside to that is that Draymond Green was defending Siakam. Uh, and Siakam was wide open for those two threes. So that's why I, I tweeted out earlier tonight, Draymond got a net positive of plus three from that exchange. But he still had a, a solid game tonight, just one rebound shy of, of hitting the, the, the double digits mark there, had nine rebounds, five assists, had 17 points. And again, as I cited that number earlier, I have not confirmed that myself, but I saw that on Twitter, that Draymond Green, every time he scores 10 or more points, the Warriors win 80% of their game. So that is awesome. By the way, I'm seeing all the, all the chats. I will get to James Wiseman in a minute because I'm trying to save the negativity for later in the show. I want to start off with the good stuff folks, but I am seeing everything that's in here so far in your chat. And please do continue on. I do read all of it. Uh, other highlights of this game. Um, Kevon Looney had another fantastic game. He's just having a great season. Um, all in all in tonight's action, 11 points for him. That's good. 11 rebounds, though. That's that's where his value's really been uh, uh, crucial for the Warriors this year and really as a rebounder. I, I don't know if any people really thought of Kevon Looney. Um, and I'm going to go way back into the 80s of Warriors lore here and saying this, but the Warriors used to have a shorter type center like Kevon Looney named Larry Smith, um, who was a rebounding machine. And he was 6'9", just like Looney. And Looney's turned into that. I mean, uh, you know, I don't think anyone's going to forget that the 22 rebounds in a conference title clinching game tonight, 11 more. He's turned into a rebounding stud uh, and entering this game for the season. He's now averaging 7.7 rebounds per game, which does lead the Warriors. He had a fantastic game. Dante DiVincenzo is an example of where the stat sheet doesn't always represent their value for a team because DiVincenzo tonight only had uh, he had five shot attempts total, only threw up three three point attempts, and he only finished with five points. Made one three, one basket, had no free throw attempts, uh, but he did have six assists. And most importantly, perhaps, is the fact that he is a security blanket for whoever his backcourt teammate is on the floor because of how great of a defender he is. Um, Dante Divincenzo is fantastic. I I cannot praise Bob Myers enough for nailing him down. Obviously, the phone call from Stephen Curry helped out a bunch. So, DiVincenzo was huge tonight. Clay Thompson had a great game. Uh, you, and, and this is a player who, again, are, we're, we're watching him closely now because Clay needs to start improving his game overall. And tonight, 35 minutes of play, uh, he was three for nine from three. So, he's right at the Mendoza line of what you want from a three point shooter, 33% shooting, had seven rebounds, which was clutch. You, and for Clay at this stage of his career, if he can't be as explosive as he used to be, he's got to pick it up in other parts of his game. And rebounding could be one of those. So to see seven rebounds from him tonight was clutch. 17 points, clutch. Most importantly, led the team in plus minus tonight with plus 14. So kudos to, to Clay Thompson as well for having a great game tonight. And that's not all, though. This team, again, the, the Warriors were on fire tonight. Um, off the bench, one player which uh, has really been polarizing, been kind of controversial, but he was a stud for the Golden State Warriors, and that is Jamichael Green. Jamichael Green looked like the player that the Warriors were hoping they signed in the offseason. He has been a disappointment this year. Before I get into what he's, he did tonight, entering this game, he's only averaging 5.5 points per game. He's only averaging 3.9 rebounds per game. He's only shooting 23.9% from three. Those are all awful and just shy of 15 minutes per game. Um, he's also averaging just over one turnover per game. Uh, it's safe to say this has not been Jermichael, Jermichael Green's year, at least so far. But tonight, tonight, Jermichael Green looked like the player they've been hoping for. He only played 17 minutes, went two for three from beyond the arc, grabbed seven rebounds in only 17 minutes of play, and at 15 points, he shot five for seven from the field. If this version of Jermichael Green is who shows up night after night, the Warriors have another bench player. And for a team with a horrible bench like the Warriors of the season, they've been needing him in the worst possible way. So kudos to Jermichael Green for being a huge positive 
and and really contributing to a solid Warriors win. Um, now we're going to get to the negatives, and we'll get to that in just a second because there's quite a few of that. And I got into a, a few little tiffs. On, I hate Twitter, first of all. It is such a ridiculous platform for having any kind of discourse when you have character limits, uh, when people forget about what people write two seconds later, uh, when all people want to do is just read their own words. It's just not conducive for enlightenment, folks. Um, but, you know, some people came at me and they're like, well, why are you hating on on Steve Kerr? That Because he didn't play Wiseman and Kaminga, by the way. There were two players. And one person came at me and was like, open your eyes. Kaminga uh, had wraps on his leg. He might have been injured. I don't think he's injured because he came back in the game late. Uh, so we'll talk about that in just a moment. Because the fact that Kaminga and Wiseman did not see any important action in this game. And the fact that Moses Moody, the third of the triumvirate of youngsters, for Moody to just have 11 minutes tonight. That is just so disappointing. Um, because, folks, when I make these arguments, I'm thinking big picture. And I'll explain all this in just a moment, all right? Um, well, Bruce, <laughs> real quick, and Bruce Morrow, you write this chat, uh, is like Twitter. Well, at least like if you engage with me, I will not give you condensed uh, answers. Hopefully, they're thought out and they provide detail. We'll get into all that in just a moment. Uh, first, got to give some love to some sponsors of this program. Uh, they help pay the bills. And they're, fortunately for me, they're really awesome uh, sponsors. We're going to start off first with prize picks. And I got this overlay for the YouTube viewers. There you go. And what a fun game this is. It's legal in California, folks. You've heard me talk about it. If you're new to the program, the premise for prize picks, relatively simple. Two to six players. Okay. And it could be any major sport. doesn't have to just be the NBA. But let's say the NBA, for example, minimum two players you pick, right? Could have been Jordan Poole tonight. And, and if you're just going to go with two players, they have to be on different teams. So let's say tonight, I forgot to bet, but uh, if I was going to play Jordan Poole, okay, he's over under tonight was probably like 27 and a half. You decide, is he going to score more points than that? Or is he going to score less points than that? And then let's say Fred Van Vliet is another option you pick. Let's say his over-under tonight would have been like 19 and a half. Uh, I'm just spitballing here. Uh, then it's the same thing. Is he going to score more than that or less than that? You could also bet on rebounds, assists, a combination of stats. It is super fun. And again, the whole premise of sports gambling, folks, is it suddenly makes a very uninteresting game very interesting. And the same applies for prize picks. It is so fun. I've been winning on there. I'll totally help out anyone. If they ever want advice on it, just DM me on Twitter at Dog Surf Rojo. Download the Price Picks app or go to pricepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant de deposit match of up to $100 if you use the promo code LOCKED ON. If you deposit $100, they give you $100. If you deposit just $50, they give you 50 bucks. And if you only deposit 20 bucks, that's fine. They'll still match that. Whatever you deposit, they will match if you enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100. And tonight's show is also brought to you by Turo. We're in a place in this world right now. It's funky. It's not easy to find cars. Whether you're shopping for a new car, whether you're aiming for a rental car, supply is just not there. The pandemic has slowed the, the supply chain down primarily with microchips. So folks, if you need a ride, Turo is there for you. They're the world's largest car sharing marketplace with Turo. You can book any car you want, wherever you want it, from a community of local hosts. You can browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget across the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. You can book a spacious SUV or minivan for a family road trip. You can get that classic or luxury car for a special event or a birthday or a holiday. Let's say you want to test drive a new electric vehicle. You're thinking about buying one. Uh, you could first test drive it with Turo to see how it fits. Many Turo hosts can even deliver the car right to you. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Forget boring rental cars and find your drive at Turo.com. <laughs> On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. Make sure to check out 
Locked on Sports today after us. The biggest stories around the sports world in 20, 20 minutes or less, plus instant reactions, game recaps, and Locked On's take of the day. I've been on that show many times. It's fun. Locked on Sports today, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. All right. So, and, and I saw a chat here, uh, someone writing the chat, Wayne Nakub uh, or N-Cube. What, I, I hope I'm pronouncing your, your name correctly here. Wayne writes, I have tried to defend Kerr all season, and it's weird to be this critical after a rare win. Steph or no Steph, but it's ridiculous now. I agree with you. Jermichael Green playing that much with a kid sitting is crazy. I think what's even more crazy is the fact that Kerr continues giving the two-way players minutes. I know I'm a broken record saying this, so I will not say much about it, all right? I'm not going to sit here and bash Ty Jerome and Anthony Lamb tonight. If Hopefully, that'll make you folks happy. Um, but it, what is not unexcusable to me, utterly inexcusable to me, is Jonathan Kaminga, who has found his way back into the rotation, getting only five minutes of play tonight. He only had three until the very end, last two minutes of the game. Three minutes. And those weren't a bad three minutes either. He was actually part of a winning team when he was out there. The plus minus was in the positive while he was out there. I saw him have this beautiful left-handed driving layup that was not easy to finish he has size the dude is six eight and athletic so even though like someone points out for example he had no rebounds last game which is true i see that as an anomaly mostly because in the in the 76ers game Kaminga was assigned to guard james harden for a lot of that game and he didn't do bad for a 20 year old second year player guarding a veteran future hall of famer like james harden he was holding his own if, if Jonathan Kaminga was inept at defense, he would have fouled out of that game so fast with Harden's gimmicks, but he he did fine, he, and he was hustling, oftentimes uh, guarding Harden uh, full court, but that also affected his rebounding total because oftentimes Harden doesn't penetrate like he used to. Harden was shooting a lot of deep shots, and Harden was also passing the ball inside a lot, so Kaminga was not grabbing rebounds because he wasn't in position for him. That's okay. I'm going to forgive him for that game, all right? But to... to only play him for five minutes. And it's really three because, again, the last two minutes were garbage time of a game already won. I don't get that. I don't get that. And on the same night where uh, Anthony Lamb gets 15 minutes, on the same night where Ty Jerome gets 18 minutes, I don't get it. I don't get that, that Ty Jerome is getting seven more minutes than Moses Moody, who did nothing tonight statistically, but had a plus six on the plus minus. But Anthony Lamb getting minutes over Jonathan Kaminga and getting minutes over James Wiseman, who Steve Kerr announced after the Philly game, Wiseman was going to stay with the team for the remainder of the road trip. What's the point? What's the point in keeping him if you're not going to play him? I did this. It just doesn't make sense. I, and here's the reason why I, here's the reason why I care so much, all right? And here's the reason why, despite the fact the Warriors won tonight, their first road victory of this road trip, the reason why it still bothers me that even on a night when they win, and keep in mind the Toronto Raptors, I think it's safe to say, are the worst team in the NBA this year. The worst. The absolute worst. But the reason why, big picture, with each of these games that you're not giving important minutes to the youngsters, the detriment lies in the fact that Come postseason, okay, let's say for the sake of argument, Ty Jerome and Anthony Lamb are given guaranteed deals. Never mind the fact that I would that would make me want to vomit and throw up in, uh, immediately if that happened because you gave Quindary Weatherspoon for four straight years two-way deals. That guy did nothing but pay his dues, and you rewarded him with cutting his ass for no good reason except simply expressing in an interview one time that he feels like he deserves a guaranteed deal. Oh no, God forbid you say something that the Warriors don't agree with, you're out. So never mind the fact that if they give guaranteed deals to Lamb and Ty Jerome, how sickening that would be. That would just, that, oh my God, that would just be, uh, I, I, yeah, you, you get what I'm saying. But more importantly, if the Warriors think, and if Steve Kerr thinks that they can survive the postseason and they can win a championship, with Anthony Lamb and Ty Jerome playing important postseason minutes, he's out of his mind, all right? And the reason why I don't have a lot of faith in Steve Kerr as a head coach, I like him. I'm not calling for his head because ultimately there's so much ineptness out there 
There's so much incompetency out there that you don't have a lot. You know, there aren't a lot of better options than Steve Kerr. He's a, he's, he's a good coach, not a great coach, but a good coach. So I'm not going to call for his head because like, who are you going to replace him with? Right. But do I need to remind you, this is the same head coach who never valued Gary Payne the second ever. Okay. He didn't play him in game one of the NBA finals when Gary Payne the second was fully ready to go. They lost that game. He cut his ass before last season started. All right. So his treatment of Gary Payton the second alone gives me a lot of pause about his judgment. All right. I've already mentioned the 2018 Western Conference Finals. Steve Kerr doesn't like bigs. That was a series against the Houston Rockets that went to seven games. All right. That was a nail biter. That was if Andre Iguodala, first of all, doesn't get hurt. That series is over in five regardless. But you saw those rebounds that Clint Capella was grabbing. He was averaging, I think, like 18 rebounds a game that series. Don't quote me on that, but it, it felt like it. And all Steve Kerr had to do in that series was play JaVale McGee, who was sitting right on his bench, who was hungry, who was eager, who did all the right things, who said all the right things the whole season. And Steve Kerr barely played in that series. And instead of having an easy series with a great physical presence in the middle to block shots and grab rebounds, he kept going with the small ball lineup, and they barely pulled that series off in seven games. That's just – that's just I can I can come back on this show. For anyone in here who is a – or anyone listening or watching who is a Steve Kerr apologist, I can make a fat list, if you really want me to, listing every mistake he's made. The list is long, and it has shown me that I cannot blindly trust him, all right? I have full faith in Stephen Curry, one of the greatest players in the history of this game, by far. And the stakes this season are so damn high because if Stephen Curry wins a fifth title, which the Warriors can still do, the Warriors can still win a world championship this year. I'm far from saying the season's over. It is not. Even though they're at the 31 game mark, they're 15 and 16. They still own the worst record in the uh, road record in the NBA. I still believe confidently that the Warriors can repeat as world champions, but they're not going to do it if Ty Jerome and Anthony Lamb are signed to guarantee deals and they're the ones that, that the Warriors are going to rely on for bench minutes because you cannot exhaust this current lineup with heavy minutes the way they've been doing all season and expect these players to survive all the way through the NBA Finals and winning 16 games. That's not happening, all right? And if you disagree with me, that's fine. We'll agree to disagree on that, but... My reasoning for, for why he's been constantly sitting and getting DNPs or garbage time minutes for Kaminga after showing weeks of growth and development and actually playing great ball out there, only getting three minutes tonight, it says five in the stat sheet, two of those are garbage time, is because if you don't develop these three kids, and Moses Moody's included, if you don't give them the reps so that they're growing this entire season, and if, and if they're not ready for the postseason to give you important minutes like they did last year, they're not winning a world championship. They're not. And so when I'm complaining about the Warriors winning a game tonight against a Raptors team that is god-awful, this is the worst team in the NBA. You can't even say the Orlando Magic are worse. The Magic just won six in a row. The Toronto Raptors are the worst team in the NBA right now. So when the Warriors are beating a team like that, and not developing Wiseman, not developing Kaminga in the process, that is a detriment to the big picture, which is a repeat world championship. These two players and Moody, Moody should have gotten more than 11 minutes tonight. You know what? Like when, when the news dropped that Stephen Curry was injured, all I kept hearing from, from all sorts of media types and fans is that, well, we finally get to see the youngsters. This is a chance for the youngsters to shine. No, it's not because Kerr, seems to have fallen in love with Ty Jerome and Anthony Lamb. And they're not going to be key figures in a world championship run, folks. Plain and simple. All right? So that's why I care so much. Uh, we'll have more in just a moment, and I'm going to see what's going on in the chat. Maybe play some sound if anything's been dropped. Uh, first, got to give some love. This is a really fun sponsor, folks. Uh, and, and the sponsor is ExpressVPN. Now, what ExpressVPN does is protect, it protects your privacy, right? But it also hides your location. And if streaming services, if websites, if they can't track where you are, they can't limit your access to services that have location restrictions, right? 
So let's say in the United Kingdom, you want to binge The Office. You can't do that on Netflix. You can if you have ExpressVPN. Uh, if you love Korean dramas, let's say you want to watch the movie uh, Parasite and you want to watch it on South Korean Netflix, ExpressVPN lets you do that. It works with any streaming service, Hulu, BBC, YouTube, you name it. ExpressVPN is also incredibly fast and it works on all devices, whether it's your smartphone, your tablet, your PC, your smart TV, no matter what it is, ExpressVPN will work on it. So if you want to get access to hundreds of new shows, go to expressvpn.com slash locked on right now, and you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. That's expressvpn.com slash locked on. Again, expressvpn.com slash locked on to learn more. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. All right, what's going on in the chat here? I want to see uh, uh, what people are writing. Now, Robert Bryan presents something, and I and this thought crossed my mind. Robert Bryan writes, Wiseman may be on the trading block, so that's why he's not playing, and they're afraid he's going to get injured. And I was thinking that both for him and for Kaminga tonight, because the Kaminga thing was really baffling. Like, it took me until the... the I think late third quarter, early fourth, when I suddenly was like, I haven't seen him in a while. And I looked at the, the, the box score and realized he only had those three minutes from the first half. And that thought did cross my mind. Now, yesterday, I do want to uh, hype this up real quick. And in fact, I'm going to add it to the ticker right here. Um, whoops, not that. Uh, so the Hall of Famer Rick Barry and I have a pod, have a show of our own. And... On yesterday's show, Rick had been feeling under the weather, so we hadn't done a show in a few weeks. Um, and we he came back yesterday, and Rick, until yesterday's show, had, um, let's just say Rick was not concerned with what the Warriors were doing, all right? He thought, well, um, they're the defending champs. It's early in the season. Nobody's worried. They'll turn things around. There was just absolutely no panic whatsoever. We do a show yesterday. And I have the, if you're watching the YouTube stream, look at the bottom. It's youtube.com slash Rick Barry show. The show should be available now. Uh, the podcast will be available in just moments. I hope I got that right. Um, someone in the chat, let me know if that link doesn't work. But Rick has changed his tune on the Warriors. Rick Barry, who's is one of the most brilliant basketball minds in on the planet. I mean, he's, he's absolutely, he's when it comes to hoops, when it comes to a lot of things, he knows exactly what he's talking about. Him and I, we don't, you know, we, 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 we prefer to uh, stay away from talking politics and, and about certain social issues and, and it maintains the peace, but we're, we're, we're an example of two people who might have different values to a certain extent, but can still get along. So Rick, um, his biggest concern and, this is something that I'm going to echo because I only learned about this. I think most people just learned about this a week or so ago. I forgot. I even forgot who broke the story. I think it was on ESPN maybe. But Bob Myers, his contract is up after the season. And one of the first questions I asked Rick was, is this normal to have a general manager of not just a defending world champion, but of a dynasty? I mean, you look at his track record. And there are such few people who can repeat that, who can who can replicate that level of success. And it, it it's weird. It is weird that Bob Myers is going to be a free agent after this season. It's weird that he doesn't have a new deal lined up yet. And Rick agrees. Rick was actually very stunned. He didn't know about that. A lot of people still don't know about that. Some news stories, it is fascinating how they get suppressed or they don't get out there. Um, 
And I don't know if that's having an impact on this thing. I haven't heard Bob talk to the media in a while. Um, I, I mean, there, there is no doubt that there is a clear divide between Kerr and ownership because ownership wants the lottery picks to play. All right. James Wiseman, to, to put it in perspective, is costing this team with luxury tax penalties approximately $80 million just to just to have Wiseman on your roster. So if you're the owner of this team, if you're Joe Lacob, <laughs> and, and, and Gruber's also the owner too, by the way, but Lacob is, is the, the more prominent of the two in terms of uh, engagement and, and, is, and, and, is, and just being vocally active. Um, if you're paying $80 million and your head coach is just not playing him at all, there's, <laughs> I guarantee you there is a rift going on there right now, that there's a chasm between the coaching staff and ownership and that chasm is growing because of the fact that the warriors are playing losing basketball right now okay let's not include tonight obviously um so there's something going on there and um tomorrow kyla mills is going to come on with me and i'm going to reveal on that show something about the warriors that is different this year compared to all the other years of bob meyer's regime and this dynasty and and pretty much since Lakeham took over. I'm going to save that for tomorrow with Kylan because I want to get her feedback as well. But that's weird, okay? And and Rick also, I asked him about, you know, this, this weird rotation that Kerr's doing. Never mind the fact that there's no consistency. You have no idea who's going to play what night, how many minutes. But I asked him, I'm like, do you support this whole strategy of, of Steve Kerr's, which is playing, again, Ty Jerome and Anthony Lamb, above your three youngsters and rick was vehemently opposed to that um i don't know bruce morrow writes isn't rick barry uh who said he'd rather have people that know how to play basketball than athleticism i don't know if he said something like that i you'd have i'll bring it up next time but if he said something like that i don't think it would be that simplistic um anyway so he doesn't agree with the notion either which was a relief to me because you know, it, I've only spoken, I think, one other former player recently about everything going on with the Warriors. They agreed with me. I asked Rick, you know, what are your thoughts on the fact that Wiseman's not playing at all, that Kaminga just finally started playing until tonight, that Moody's not playing, and he's not cool with that. And 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 honestly, almost every bright mind of basketball I speak to um, is also similarly puzzled by this whole rotation. So Han Solo Dolo, when you write that J.K. and Wiseman might be on the block, you might be right. You might be right. Um, Blimey Menard writes, uh, if there is such thing as karma, it was hurt by not punishing Draymond, who showed up to ring night in a leprechaun suit. And <laughs> I do remember that. Did you see those videos, by the way? Of of Because if you're wearing green, that's like you know the green screen color. And so you could literally just re replace the suit with graphics. So someone put a face of Jordan Poole on Draymond's green suit <laughs> everywhere he walked. Anyways, I digress. Um, but there, I think there's something going on there. Uh, and, and we'll see what happens. But folks, this team, I mean, I, I just, I can't sit here and just support these three lottery picks just being benched in favor of two-way players who are, again, are not going to be contributing to this team if they're going to win a world championship. It's that simple. It's that simple. Uh, smile, God loves you. Seven seven writes. Is it a firing offense that Kerr goes against ownership? Depends. I don't know how serious it is in terms of the two different sides' desires. Um, something tells me if Lakeup was very serious, he would basically give an ultimatum to Kerr. But Kerr has earned the respect of Lakeup, so I don't think it would get to that point. Um. Yeah, I'm trying to see if there's anything else in the chat that I should talk about. But one more time before we go. And Hans Olodolo, I'm with you. Hans Olodolo writes, I don't want to see Ty Jerome and Anthony Lamb. I don't care if they want. I sort of agree. If this was a game against like the Celtics and that kind of rotation is what led to success. Yeah, okay. I, you have my attention. Not the Raptors. I could care less. The, the Raptors are... They are they're the worst team in the NBA. I'm looking at the standings right now. Uh, and just to give people uh, this information before we go, the Warriors with this win tonight are now just a game under 500. And incredibly, they're just two and a half games behind the fifth seed. And they're only three and a half games behind the 
third seed. They're only four games behind the second seed. They're only five games behind the best record in the West. The Warriors are lucky that the West is in shambles this year. So despite everything going on, they're still just right in the mix. And this is why you can't rule them out for, for the postseason yet. It's, it's, there's still a lot to shake up. But I'll repeat this one more time in terms of why I care so much, even in a game that the Warriors won against a horrible Raptors team, why I care so much that Kaminga and Wiseman didn't play basically at all, and Moses Moody only got 11 minutes, unless you're trading them, unless there's a bigger plan of play here, you can't win a title this year if those three are not a part of the plan. So, and you're right, Han Solo Dolo, man, you and I are driving tonight or vibing tonight. Uh, you're right, uh, Belly was a beast defensively in the playoffs. You're right, Nemanja Bielica is sorely missed. Sorely missed. Um, Eddie757 writes, Moody was a rookie last year. He is not this year. And he played important minutes in the postseason. True. I've been saying that a long time. Um, by the way, Connor Letourneau wrote a great piece for the San Francisco Chronicle. Strongly recommend checking that out. Um, it was published today. And, and he highlights the fact that the Warriors uh, have to win two-thirds of the remaining games this season if they want to avoid the play-in. That is a projection. That's crazy. The Warriors, uh, Ty Jerome, by the way, has the worst points per 100 possessions out of all players on the roster, I briefly, briefly cited this stat on last on the last show, but I wanted to clarify it a little bit. So per 100 possessions, when Ty Jerome plays, the Warriors score 22.9 points per 100 possessions. By far the worst on the team. Okay, so despite the fact that he's not a turnover machine, huge positive. Um they're not very successful when he plays normally. And just to put it in perspective, again, the Warriors had a dominating performance tonight. But if you look at the plus minus for this team and you look at, okay, everyone was in the positive because they had a, such a dominating performance. But Anthony Lamb and Jermichael Green tied for the lowest plus minus. Ty Jerome and Moses Moody right behind him. And this team's, again, this team's just not going to win a world championship. I'm a broken record. I'll stop that. Um, all right. So it looks like there's nothing else here uh, that's new in the chat. So I will bid adieu. We're going to be right back at this tomorrow. Kylan Mills will join me. We don't have an exact time yet. Follow the program on Twitter at Locked on Dubs. We'll announce that. It'll likely be in the afternoon. I got a doctor's appointment. I got this like mole right here that I absolutely accidentally ripped off if you're watching this on YouTube. And it's not healing the same since. So I hope I'm not dying right now. Um, so I got to go see a, a doctor and get that checked out. Folks, we'll be back at this tomorrow. Um, but look, the Warriors did win. And, and a huge positive for tonight. I'm going to say there's two massively huge positives tonight. And smile, God's you 77. Love you too. Thank you. I'm all about love. Um, and uh, A, Jermichael Green. Please keep doing this. In 17 minutes of play, he scored 15 points, seven rebounds. Two for three from beyond the arc. You keep doing what you're doing, okay? You just keep doing that, and you will earn minutes on this team. The Warriors are desperate for that. And then, obviously, Jordan Poole, man. The pool party was raging tonight. 35 minutes of play. Five for 11 from deep. 43 points. A career high. Bravo, Jordan Poole. Much love to all of you, man. Right back at you. Let us pray sports. Much love. Right, <laughs> Khaled uh, writes, day two of trying to convince Cyrus that Ty Jerome is good. No, that's not going to work on me. The only <laughs> um, it's not going to work on me. The only way I'll be convinced of that is if Ty Jerome plays, like if he suddenly has like a 20 game stretch where he's impressing that after night, maybe I'll reconsider. But I don't want to, I do not want the Warriors to be in that position, please. Um, <laughs> and JK writes, uh, Ty actually pretty steady, decent floor vision. I mean, like, he's just, he's just at best, he's average. And if you're trying to win a world championship, that's just not going to work. That's, he's just not, he's not good enough. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to hate on him personally. 
him and Lamb are not good enough. You like Jonathan Kaminga, good enough. He just needs time. He needs he needs reps. He needs experience. James Wiseman, seven one athletic beast. His rookie year, he was hitting three pointers. He offensively is a machine. Defensively, getting there. Moses Moody, give him the chance. He could be a, a he's a fantastic wing defender. He can hit threes at six six. He's a big, strong shooting guard. Those are the types of players you need on your bench for a postseason run. Not Anthony Lamb, who's 6'5", super uh, diminutive for a power forward. Not Ty Jerome, who is, there's nothing special about him. Nothing. Nothing at all. So they, they just, they can't keep running with these guys. It's not going to work. Yeah, he's not a horrible player, but it's just, you can't, you're not going to win a title with these guys. Um <laughs> And so uh, Eddie757 writes to the old school guys, Ty Jerome equals Judd Bushler. That's kind of an insult to Judd Bushler. But um, yeah, so all right, folks, I'm out of here. Uh, have a great night. We'll be back at it tomorrow. Follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Dubs. We'll announce the time for tomorrow's show with Kylan Mills. And again, the Warriors now just one game under 500. Uh, and Judd Bushler was a legend. I do wholeheartedly agree with you. And he's actually a surfing legend still. Um, down in San Diego, him and Kerr and Q and those guys go surfing uh, down in Baja. Yeah, Judd Bushel's a legend. Michael Jordan's teammate. Absolutely right. All right, folks, have a great night. Thank you. Later.